I've just watched Sandy Munro start to tear down the Tesla Model S Plaid. Here's a quick summary so you don't have to watch the full 30 minute video. Hello my friends and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you here from Melbourne in Australia. Welcome to all your new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back to everyone else. Now, big shout out to our Patreon supporters of the channel. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter, you can. I'll put a link in the description below to our Patreon account. So Tesla Model S Plaid. Well, the first thing that I noticed was Sandy started to criticize the Tesla. He sat in the back seat for a long time for a huge three and a half thousand mile road trip. And he wasn't very complimentary about it. So this is interesting because I've noticed that a lot of people think Sandy Munro is this massive Tesla homer. Doesn't matter. He'll just make excuses for anything that Tesla do that's bad. Well, if you actually bothered to watch the video, if you're one of those people, you'd find out that actually that wasn't the case at all. The very first thing he does, he looks at the car and he goes, you know what? Here are the problems with the car. Here's what I didn't like. And some of those things were the back seat. He found it uncomfortable. He thinks the angle of the seat, there's something about it. Potentially the fact that the floor is not as low as it could be. So you sit with your knees up a bit higher, like in the CarWow review, where the main guy from CarWow says that his main issue with the car is the floor isn't low enough. So his knees are kind of pointing upwards and it's not very comfortable for a long journey. So fair point. Now, another one of the things Sandy said is that the seat belts are not that easy to clip into in the back and they need an extender on them so that you can pull them out a bit. So there's our next problem. In addition to that, Sandy pointed out that there is an issue with the actual trim around the edge of the door seal on the right hand side of the car behind the front passenger seat, which caused some wind noise, which he found was irritating. So now we've got that done. The video then talks about the fact that the main one of the main engineers here in the video, he actually didn't want to let anyone else drive the car. He got to drive the car for a few months and he said he absolutely loved it. And for that reason, so Sandy and the other engineer barely got to drive the car because he just took it all the time. He said that in ice and snow, the door handles, everything worked perfectly. And he barely needed, he only used the supercharges, he said once over the course of, I think, two months of driving the car. And I was actually, I've got to say, surprised by just how much he seemed to love the car. Now, in addition to that, Sandy said that then he nearly had an accident. Well, he wasn't paying attention. A car in front of him just slammed on their brakes for no reason, didn't indicate or anything, just in the middle of the road, just stopped. Sandy wasn't paying attention. And he said, fortunately, the Tesla stopped of its own accord and beeped its horn by itself at the person in front of him. So he basically said that the Tesla vehicle prevented him from having an accident. And he pointed out in the same breath that people are making some, they're trying to take advantage of Twitter and YouTube to and say kind of crazy things about Tesla vehicles because they know that people will watch those videos. And he's saying that his experience of the way the Tesla vehicle drives and can prevent accidents was actually extremely impressive. So that's some of the some of the first parts of the video. Well, after that point, they start to take the car apart piece by piece, and they actually remove the majority of the trunk without using any tools at all. Now, the first major finding was the new structural air tank for the air suspension, which they've never seen in a vehicle before. It's integrated into the structure as a cross member, and that cross member actually is also doubles as an air tank for the air suspension. Now, all three engineers were very, very impressed by the fact that Tesla had somehow gotten all these different parts of their engineering team to work together to come up with that solution. Double use of parts, they say, is something that allows reducing weight and overall cost. And it also highlights how interdisciplinary, it also highlights how interdisciplinary of an approach that Tesla actually has to building their vehicles. Now this video is running a bit behind schedule. Apparently, according to Sandy Munro's Twitter account, they have actually now removed the battery from the Plaid 
and the undercarriage and opened up the battery pack to see what's going on inside. Now I'll have a new video talking about what they discover inside the battery pack. But at this point in time, one of the other things that they mentioned was that the car's made, the body is made of aluminium and that this can cause issues in terms of assembling the body. Now they weren't actually too sure on something they saw inside the front bonnet. Underneath the bonnet, they said there was something where there was a spacer used on the on the right hand side, which wasn't on the left hand side, and they weren't sure whether that was meant to be that way, or they'd had to do that because of the difficulty of actually welding the aluminium in the car. Obviously, the naysayers just jumped. They people in the comment section, you can't read the comments because they're just morons. They're just so critical and so negative that they'll just jump on anything and assume that it's bad straight away. Now. The team here, the three engineers, they were inconclusive on that finding. They weren't sure. And they, they're obviously going to look to take the car apart to find out exactly what was going on. However, one thing they kept coming back to, and that is just how impressed they were with what they saw underneath the front front cover. Once they removed that and they saw the way that all the parts were assembled, they were extremely impressed with how Tesla had made everything come together. Now, personally, I highly respect Sandy Munro. There is no one else out there taking cars apart in the way that they do. And I'm really surprised at just how many people lose their minds, literally lose their shit at Sandy's videos. There are so many people that feel so emotionally connected to their hatred of Tesla or their, I don't know, their just personal vendetta against Tesla. It's really quite bizarre. It's almost like, Android lovers who hate Apple and for, want to find anything to criticize, some of them are valid criticisms, sure, but spending so much of your emotional time and investing so much into your dislike of a company seems to me like an incredible waste of effort, and I really can't understand it. But anyway, there's always going to be people like that, so I think the best thing to do is ignore the comments and actually watch the video for yourself. I'll put a link in the description below to the actual video you can see. One of the other things that they pointed out before I end is that they think the front motor of the car is actually the Model 3 motor used at the rear of the Model 3. However, it's been wrapped in carbon, which hasn't been done before. So that was interesting to note. Now, I just made a video about Tesla actually lying. Tesla did lie about the power of this car. They massively understated the power. They said it had about 1,010 horsepower. But, of course, as you know, all car manufacturers measure horsepower to the flywheel. And the power has been measured now on the dyno at, well, potentially nearly 100 horsepower more at the wheels. That means this car could have 300, potentially 300 horsepower more than Tesla actually say it has. That my friends, is insane. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about that. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.